I am Ish. It is good to talk to you today. Have good a morning, wonderful Ish. day, all of you. Thank you but so I much for to, coming. Thank you very much. An update is necessary, and Takur is very busy trying to get in touch with Earth uh, situations since they are so far out in space now because of the fourth dimensional anomaly. She asked me if I would possibly stand in. She was going to speak this morning, but she decided that there was more important things to do. So I am here for her and for myself, actually. But the fourth dimensional energy has hit the planet and your solar system, of course. Of course. Mother Earth loves it. It is very uh, positive for her, very uplifting for her. However, the human population is being devastated by it in some ways. There are some people that do not feel it at all. There are some people that feel very uplifted by it. And then there's others who are very pushed down and feel very um, obscured by it, or they feel that it's it's just overwhelming. So do not worry about that. Things will come to uh, a great uh, resolution, as you will, as time goes on. It, within the next two weeks, all those that are feeling very low and tired and overwhelmed will come out of it. There are some channelers even that are not feeling that great about this great surgence of energy because, well, it affects them in, in so many ways. So you must understand that with the fourth dimensional energy, it did hit on the seventh, by the way. And that was the day some of you really felt it. But it has been building up since then. So you might have felt it even before then and seen many of the effects. Right now, some of the Mandela effects, as they are called on your world, are, are suspended in the sense that um, things are frozen with the, the emergence of the timelines coming together. They're so close together that you may see things all at once as the same place. It, it is, it's going to be unusual. Some of you will see different things, but some of you, it will seem like there's nothing wrong. You will, your psyche will adapt to the situation immediately so that you, so as not to uh, affect the brain. The brain has a wonderful way of protecting itself. So therefore, the, your brains will protect themselves from madness during this fourth dimensional energy surge that will last until the end of January or the beginning of February. So don't be worried. Everything will be fine. The brain will protect itself. Some of you that are more fourth dimensional will start to notice things and be sort of entertained by it. There's many, uh, I, I know that Jim received many comments about it, that people were actually entertained by the fact that they were able to see many different things happening and other timelines, and uh, deja vus that were just unbelievable. And some people having deja vu four and five and six times a day because they're slightly ahead of their own selves in their timeline or slightly behind themselves in another timeline. So it is a very odd situation, but you will get used to it. And the energy will integrate into your systems so that you will catch up with all the energies of the Earth, all the energies of the fourth dimension, all the energies that are moving. Now, there are plasma spots within the energy anomaly. Plasma spots tell us that there, it will eventually evolve into a life form. That's all that means. Uh, those plasma spots, fortunately, are not going to pass through the Earth. If they did, that might cause some major problems. But they are not even going to come close to passing through your part of uh, the anomaly. So therefore, is there any questions? I know that 
there are so many things I could say, but I just want to get the most important things out there up front and personal so that you're not worried, you're not overly concerned about what's happening and all that. So it will be what it is, but it will not be overly stressful, or at least it shouldn't, unless there, unless we hit a pocket of, or I should say you hit a pocket of the really agitated energy, and then that might be a little bit more stressful. But those pockets seem to be rather uh, small. They're not really very large. And if you do hit it, it will only be for a matter of several hours. It won't be days or weeks, but just hours. I think the largest one that is possible is about four to six hours. So if that happens, you will be discombobulated for about four to six hours. But, and if you are at work, that might not be a good day for you. But other than that, I think that um, most of you should be able to make it through quite easily. But we'll keep you ab abreast of the situation. Okay, Ish, thank you. Yeah, we do yes. have some questions lining up, and actually just in regards to what you had just said, could you um, maybe elaborate a tiny little bit so people would have an idea of what this discombobulation would feel like if they start to feel, I mean, is this like just severe lethargy well, or? It has, it has been explained many times, but I'll explain yes. it one more time because it is important. What happens inside of the, there is some fifth dimensional areas in this anomaly and there are some fourth dimensional areas that are tight and have a kind of, uh, what is it called, fluctuation, like it bounces back and forth. The energy is bouncing around within a small space uh, because the reason for this is because there are walls between the different portions of the uh, the energies. So this particular wall of energy, although it is the walls are also fourth dimensional, has kept the energy bouncing around very strongly at some places within the anomaly. Now this is because it is eventually going to become a life form and so there will be different kinds of energy fields within it so this kind of an energy field will probably turn out to be like a, a heart or a lung or some kind of part of the body that is functional is or adds to the functionality of the anomaly eventually not quite yet but what what you're going to experience is that the energy is moving back and forth and creating fluctuation within that certain area in the anomaly and so when that portion goes through the earth uh it will be fluctuating and many of you are very open to fourth dimensional energy and very fourth dimensional already doing channeling and many different kinds of things that are um beyond the third dimensional uh, norms at this time. So you will feel that rather strongly. It might jumble your thought processes a little bit. It won't make you crazy, it, but it will make you fuzzy headed. It will make you not want to uh, work. It will make you sort of want to lay down and rest because it will have an emotional effect on you because whenever you start getting fuzzy headed or feel like you're not concentrating properly that's usually when you get tired people will start to feel tired or or they want to lay down and if it happens while you are working which it may or may not because it is only four to six hours you may have it during your sleep and it may not even affect you but if it happens during your waking hour and you are uh, at work, you might want to just not work very hard that day. So, but anyway, any other questions about that? Okay, um, that, that definitely helps. So in regards to the symptoms and everything, um, the symptoms we're already experiencing could, yes. could just, like for instance, I'll just add in here now instead of later. I've been going through 
weird, like tingling, twitching sensations in my body and some jerking and so a little bit of dizziness and um, even some heart stuff. It's almost like every once in a while I'll have like some heart palpitations, but I'm also really focusing on um, uh, integrating these energies in beneficial ways for myself and Absolutely. not... Um, focusing on the ne the negative side of it. Oh no, this will make me have this side effect. You know, I, it's almost like a little bit exciting to me when I start to feel these things now, and I'm understanding what's going on with these energies. It's like, oh, this is kind of cool. So I think just for everyone, the more it seems like the more we focus on integrating it positively, the more we can, and it really can help us if we want what? it to. It, it will help in the long run because, of course, your earth energies have changed also. So this is a lot to handle all at once. Since the solstice in June, the energies have changed quite a bit on their own, and the fourth dimensional energies are adding to that change in some ways. And we're thinking that it is perfect for you because with these coming all at once you will be able to integrate them all very carefully and very easily with the help of the fourth dimensional energy and normally it will help you to integrate the earth energies a little easier in some ways plus the fact that there is a new at the end of the tunnel after all this energy has gone by and you and you suffer through the things that you have to this fall and and winter then things will be much nicer in the spring in some ways of course there will still be some uh things that will be have to be dealt with of course always but um i see that this fall for you is going to be very traumatic and uh this energy once it integrates hopefully will help you deal with that Okay, that is wonderful news. Um, okay, Sheer, I think, I had a question. Hello, Ish, how are you? Yes. Greetings, Sheer, how are you? I'm uh, very well. I wanted to ask you about those who might not feel uh, like the Mandela effects or deja vus. I do feel the energy, but I can't say that I have a uh, head deja vu, something like that. You are, there are some that are protected from off-world sources. You are one of those people. There are others that are protected from off-world sources. If you have a star seed family, or if you have a family that is prominent, you can be protected from some of these effects, and that is fine. You will still feel the energy, you will still get the benefits of the energy, but you will not have to suffer the uh, side effects, if you will. So there, there are many of you that are protected in this way. I know that some of you are going, you know, I'm not sure if I felt the energy or not, but you definitely will in as it moves forward. It is going to get stronger and stronger for a while, but it will even out and will start to... Uh, you will just start to live in it as a normal thing. And after it passes, you will probably miss it a little bit. So, um, because you'll actually really start to like it at about November or October, some of you are going to start saying, wow, this is really great. I like this a lot. And, but you, because it's helping you get through all the things that are happening in the fall. You see, and is the feeling of nostalgic is also a part of it. Like when you're going around and you feel like, oh, this is nostalgic feeling, like a childhood feeling. Is that a yeah. part of that energy? It, yes, because, okay, listen to this very carefully, some of you. You're going to start to experience some of your past life's thought processes in your modern day life. And it's going to seem like nostalgia, just as you said. It's going to seem like, where did that come from? I feel this feeling, did I live that in this life or did I live that 
in a prior life? Did I feel that in this life? Yes, you're going to start feeling feelings of the past. And you start going to understand that because of the intense fourth dimensional energy that you're going to start being able to unleash some of those thoughts from behind your chakra areas and in the back of your minds and in the areas of past lives which are affecting this life and things of that nature. So you will uh, find that some nostalgic feelings or even write out past life experiences will be flashing and actually come into your dream life, come into your uh, uh, daydream life as well. So do not be surprised. They won't last very long because you cannot connect to them that strongly uh, without intention, if you understand what I'm saying. But if you intend to uh, grab onto them, you will have a longer uh, chance to be with them. Okay, and one unrelated quest for healing. One of my friend's mom, he, uh, she's in the hospital and uh, she's wondering if it's possible to send her some healing energy. Yes, we understand what she, what's going on with her and have already sent some energy the fourth dimensional energy anomaly does uh, work with each individual in a specific and personal way. So therefore, when we're sending energy to someone, the fourth dimensional energy may be working with them in a different way. And so the healing portion may not get to them right away because it's dealing with emotional or spiritual or something else at this time something that is on the foremost part of their mind and that may be the healing portion but will in this case I see that there's other things that are on the foremost part of her mind other than her own healing she's thinking about her family she's thinking about some spiritual aspects of things and so they're dealing with her in that way and then the healing aspects will also kick in okay but uh, yeah she's also needs some healing but also one of her friends needs some healing yes that is where her concern is right now is her mm -hmm. friend is needing healing also and so she's being very unselfish about it and really more worrying about her friend than herself but her healing will be coming. Okay, thank you very much and much love. Much love to you. Even though her healing needs is a greater need. Hello, okay. Ish. It's yes. Sarah. How are you doing? Hello, Sarah. Well, I just want to say thank you for confirming that uh, the fourth dimensional energy was a galactic baby. I had this idea almost two years ago. I mean, two months ago. So it was really great that you confirmed that. It is, it is going to be a life form eventually. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. in a very real way, it is going to start out as a child. And that is a very, it'll probably take another few thousand years before it evolves into sentience. But yes. it is on its way. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Also, um, I'm noticing with myself about the fourth dimensional energy and uh, being able to help people kind of direct them into the timeline of their choosing. That is possible. It takes some talent. You have to understand what a timeline is, where it's at, and how to connect to it. But that yeah. Is yeah, it started happening just this week. Somebody told me th what they wanted, and I was able to like kind of point their energy to the right direction. It was very different for me. Wow, uh, to that say would the be least. very fun for it. I think that would be very fun for a lot of people. Of course, you can't stay there. You're in this timeline. Right. If you were, you can't switch timelines because there can't be two of you in one timeline permanently but 
you can be there for a very short period of time. And I know that some people have hopped on other timelines for a small period of time. For, And it does happen for specific reasons. If there is a reason for it to happen, it will happen. But if there is not a reason for it to happen, it's less likely. But it looks like this person was looking for that, and there was a reason for it, and so that it was allowed to happen. Yeah, it's, it's happened twice this week. Twice. Yes. So that is very interesting, and I think that would be extremely fun uh, for <laughs> some people. All right. Thank you for that. And I have one more question. My, my higher self yesterday came in very easily, and yes. they said it was kind of like a point of graduation for me, a graduation point, that is. There might be others, yes. but what is going it's, on? An inception of the fourth dimensional energy has been uh, accepted throughout your system. But more than that, there is the half whores have also given you a graduation period into another thought process because you have overcome some of the negative thought processes that you had been going through. There was a period just this year that they were getting, bringing to the surface a lot of negativity and you were shedding it and you were feeling it and you were, were trying to get rid of it in some way, but it, it came out naturally and it was, there was some healing that took place between you and other individuals there's still so some to do but with your mother etc but things uh -huh. are coming along very well and so you've graduated into the next step and what does that mean you will find out that means that there uh, that you have shed a lot of the negativity that they were looking for you to shed and that you are into a more positive mindset and you are into a more that this t period of time is going to be very influential for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm sure you didn't get all of that right now, but you will. In within three weeks, there it will be very obvious. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. Much love. You're welcome. <laughs> Might be even sooner than that. Awesome. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next, we have a question from Carolina, if she's ready. Yes. Hello, Carolina. Wei. I love you. I love you as well. Um, first and foremost, I would like to apologize for being asked to leave another Hangout before. I just want to tell you that we do appreciate your message, and I was very grateful that you gave it. There is no problem. Uh, you have Thank to understand, you. And, and you are always forgiven. Thank you. You must understand, we as off-world people understand who earthlings are, what they feel, and the turmoil they must go through to try to connect to us in a personal way. We are really not really real to you in some aspects. So when you say nasty things about us or... I, which you really didn't do, but uh, there are many that will say things about us that they feel they lash out or whatever. We do not take offense because we see that really they're saying, I don't really believe that you're there. And so until they really do believe that we are here, they cannot really connect to us in a genuine way. Now, of course, some of that anger is because they have connected to us in a genuine way. And we say to that, also wonderful, because you need to get your frustrations out. We need for you to connect and tell us exactly how you feel. We are not, not offended by that, because it is growth for you, growth for humanity, and growth for all. Because there is a lesson there to be learned, there is positivity to come afterwards. We know that some people do not like us because of things that we have done. They feel that we've been less than honest or feel that we have been less than genuine. But believe me, we are moving to in, in your best interests. 
We are moving in your best interests, and we will continue to do so. And some people will like it, and some people will not. And so that is just the way it is. And you will not find a single a group of people that will all agree about anything. So we have to move the way we feel justified. Thank you, Ish, because we know your message comes from the heart, and I feel your love. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask, yes, I'm experiencing twitches and, and weird things, like seeing flashes um, yeah. lately, and I was wondering if this is to do with um, it developing your abilities. Is, is this cloud helping people develop abilities? What it is, is you're feeling the fourth dimensional energy anomaly, and yes, it affects each individual in a very personal and individual way. So, um, yes, and it is a very positive thing, and these flashes may be sending healing out to other people. Is that what you're picturing? Yes, healing and um, sensing more. I'm sensing flashes, I'm sensing beings around, I'm sensing oh, yeah, you around. <laughs> but these, these will not be fourth dimensional beings because the fourth dimensional beings have all fled. These will be either third or fifth or higher dimensional or angelic beings or things of that nature. So yes, you may be experiencing other dimensional beings as well. Oh, thank you so much. That's that's very useful. Uh, my second question is, um, I would like your advice on, uh, I've been trying to uh, deal with negative energies uh, the best I can, um, trying to protect ourselves and the community, um, and um, I've tried to confront the negativity, but I was wondering if there is any uh, suggestions or advice you can give us on how to deal with negative beings? With negative beings? Yeah. All right, first of all, you don't have to put up with negative beings. You see, if you believe that you have, you see, negative beings are just that. They have negative energy, and you have positive energy and negative energy within you. So. Do you command your own positive and negative energy within you? Yes, you have free will. You have a consciousness. You have this body that you bring in what you wish to bring into it. You accept what you wish to accept into it, and you know what is there. Now, negativity can be, can be outside and still affect you inwardly because it is trying to make that kind of a change in you, but it's coming from the outside. Do you understand? You do not yeah. have to accept that kind of negativity. You can just tell it to be off. And if you believe that it can be gotten rid of, it can be gotten rid of because you have free will. You have the right to uh, own your own space. If you know what I mean. Yeah. How about so therefore when you can, you can tell it to go, and it does have to leave. It can come back, but you see that's up to you sometimes. How now there about, are I'm there sorry. are darker and more malevolent beings out there, and they we have to deal with them in a different way. But for the most part, most negativity can be shed and gotten rid of very easily. Continue. Well, yes, I, I just uh, wanted to ask you, when this negativi neg negativity is deceiving people you love in the community, what can you do about it? You can let these people know. You see, they're aware that it's negative, I'm pretty sure, aren't they? I'm not sure. Not, not all of them, I don't think. I see. Interesting. Personally, you can pray for them and send healing to them and pray that their eyes are opened. If they're being deceived by negativity, that is because they like <coughs> what the negativity is saying to them and they're accepting it. So they're actually accepting that into their 
personal space and are part of, they become part of that negativity and are saying, oh, there's nothing really wrong with that. There's nothing really wrong. I believe that because mm-hmm. they're, they're not aware of the truth of the matter. But if, even if they are aware of the truth of the matter, they would choose to believe this because it enforces something that they are be- doing or believing that may not be correct. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. I'll let somebody so, else ask. I love a lot you so of much. people. Very much, I love you very dearly. Let me go into that a little bit more. There are okay. so many of you that will be accepting of negative energy because it actually is part of something that you're guilty of. Does that make sense to you? It's yeah. like, all right. I'll, I accept that information because I don't want to give up this belief system that I know is faulty. Do you understand that? Yes. And so I'll accept the false, I'll ex- accept that from anyone because it builds me up and makes me m- more innocent and I don't have to give up the things that are not pure or good. And so I'll accept that. But you see, when you the, the thing about that is, if you just ter- tweak it a little bit, are you sure that those things that you're thinking are unpure are really unpure? Can't you accept it as positive energy and find out the truth about what you are really feeling and doing and understand it in a positive light and not always in a negative light? Because some people were born up thinking you can't dance or play cards or masturbate or anything. And they put a negative connotation to it. And therefore, it is negative. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Is there a perception? And so if you change the perception to say, okay, why is it negative? Why is that? Why am I accepting blindly that this is a negativity? Why can it not be a positivity? And why? And let's learn what the truth is about these things. And if it truly is negative, why am I accepting it? And if it truly is positive, why am I guilty about it? So therefore, look at yourselves. There are so many things that society in your world says, oh, that's no, you can't do that. But there's really nothing wrong. You're not hurting anybody. It's just they don't want you to do it. They don't want you to enjoy your life. They don't want you to be happier than they are. So be happier than they are by accepting the truth about what positivity and negativity is. Just don't listen to society and accept it blindly. Many people do, and they, try, they go to work and try to fit themselves into a, a square peg when they're actually feeling very round. And that doesn't work. It's not who they are, but yet it affects them eventually because that roundness starts to, to get off, out of shape, and they start to become something they're really not. And so this energy, let it work for you in a very positive way. Let it like bring out the truth of who you really are. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to put up a preaching nose there. So it's just... it, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Kralik next. Yes. Yes, hello. Kralik, hello. I have two questions. My first one is, it's about an incident a few days ago where a, where a rocket ship attempted to launch, but it exploded. What's interesting about it is that there was an object seen flying right past it just as it was destroyed. I want to know if that was if you have any information on that. If you're, 
Yes, I do. If you're thinking that it caused the explosion, no, it didn't. It was there be to warn them not to take off. It was in the area for quite a while before they took off and trying to warn them that it would explode if they did try and attempt to take off. That is why it was there. It was not there to explode the ship, but to warn it that it would explode if they would try to take off. Now, they saw this object for quite a while before the, uh, the launch. And they were wondering what it was. It kept coming back and moving, maneuvering. It also attempted to make contact, and they were not able to hear what it had to say. They were not able to make contact, but it was aware of faulty, uh, a faulty launching problem, and they were just trying to warn them. Okay, and my second question is about uh, the society that you live in. Um, what is it like if you give a brief uh, description of it? Well, I'm an Ascendant Master, that, and I live in the Oversoul, but I also have a planet that we, as Ascendant Masters, go to and inhabit that's in another dimensional area that is not quite... It, it's between dimensions, and so it is a place for us to congregate, because there are so many of us that are Ascended Masters that are not gone back into a, a physical state at this point. And so it's called Ishka, and it is in the Sirius area, in, but it does move within and out of certain different areas of space. It, so, but we love it, and we bring humans there sometimes in spirit to speak to them and guide them and just talk. So the realm that I live in is one of great beauty and pleasure. And speaking to humans is one of my great challenges, for one thing, but a great mission for me to bring truth to this world from, but not be part of this world, but still be part of it in a way. I'm bringing and imparting what I see as truth to you. Uh, so therefore, my world is between worlds. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, we do have a question from Bianca. She was asking, in regards to the fourth dimensional energies, do they have an effect on the inner Earth beings also? She said she knows other aliens have yes. left the Earth and distanced themselves from Earth because of the cloud. And, it, well, at least that's what we've been hearing. <laughs> so she's asking if these energies affect them as well or if they're protected or anything. Of course it does. Anyone that is on Earth that has any fourth dimensional energy in the brain or released to any, which all these creatures do, because most of them are advanced, uh, yes, it will affect them, but in a positive way, because the Earth is being affected in a positive way, the energies of the Earth are being affected in a positive way, except for a couple draconian colonies and a couple other colonies there have been mostly very positive reactions. Okay, interesting. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, next we have a question from um, Winter, if you would like to go next. Hello? Hello, Winter. Hunter, is your microphone working? Um, I think I might be able to ask in the meantime, I'm not Do sure. You know her question? Do you know her question? Yeah, she was looking for confirmation of whether or not she has actually been um, abducted by aliens. 
Um, she was looking for maybe a confirmation she feels very much as she has been. Could you um, yes. touch on that? Yes, but it not, it's not been recently. It's been quite a while ago. But she has been abducted, and those, uh, those people, the Zeta Greys that abducted her, were punished because they had abducted several people. And uh, hers was not necessarily the most harsh of the, of the abductions, but hers was not a nice abduction, I don't think. I'm getting the, I'm getting the thought that she was not happy with that abduction at all. So, um, but yes, there was a time in the past, she was, what age? I'm not sure. It's very, fu very fuzzy at this time. But I know that it was not a good abduction and it was Zeta Grays. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for touching on that. Um, next, we have a question from Trinity. She would like to ask why so many people are having Continue. accidents Hello, at all. How are you? Yes, she uh, had to run to work. Um, but she did want to know why so many people are having accidents and almost dying but surviving. She's wondering if this is a part of the their own, <laughs> she calls it a Mandela Effect journey, but I'm sure you know what she means. I'm, there are some things that happen on Earth that are just part of what is going to happen no matter what kinds of energies are around. But some of these things, yes, have been affected by the fourth dimensional energies, especially the, the quick revivals. There have been many things happening that are, uh, there were cars that fell off of buildings, but people were not harmed, and there were things that, there were great earthquakes that happened, and a whole groups of people that were in places that should have collapsed did not. Uh, there were many, many things of this nature that have been happening around the world. And these are effects of some karma and fourth dimensional energy, but some things that are happening are just a part of third dimensional life. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have a question from Slava. He would like to know, he says, it looks like we humans have contradictory aspects in our soul and these aspects give us soul power. Some are as strong as black holes, and that aliens might have fewer contradictory aspects in our souls. Are you able to, I think he means in their souls, um, are you able to comment on that at all? Well, that's a subject that I could speak to for hours upon hours on end. But, sure. yes, there are always contradictory things within every soul in every realm except for the spiritual realms angelic realms god realms if you will but even in those realms there are some aspects that are negative and they have to exist to keep that that realm in existence now i could go into that for a long period of time but yes in some souls there are such powerful teas that it does sometimes rip the person apart in the thought process that they do they are accepting and rejecting at the same time very like principles now that in itself is an enigma, and it goes against anything that most people would believe. Because you can, it would seem that they could not exist together, but they can. And the reason they can exist together is because, well, first of all, all things are possible. Do not ever say that's impossible, because you'll find out that some species has learned how to do it. Um, or is learning how to do it right now. But yes, 
the soul is an amazing and diverse creature. And I say creature because it comes in all different shapes, sizes, thoughts, patterns, colors, creeds, and you, you do not know what your soul looks like because no one ever sees the soul. But when you go to the oversoul, <coughs> it can become whatever it wants to be, whoever it wants to be, but most of the time, and capture this with your thought processes, it stays very much the same as it was in the last life for a long period of time. And why do you think that is? Because that is what it's used to, that is what it is comfortable with, and eventually it learns to move out, becomes self into eternity, reintegrate itself into uh, other societies, perhaps. But when you go to the Oversoul, the same beliefs that you have right now will stay with you for quite a while. Even though you are with God, He is not going to try to zap you with His who He is. And he just wants you to be aware that He is there and that he loves you, and that if you have questions, he is there to answer them, and he is there to be all things to you, but you he is not there to change you. He is there to support you. So therefore, you'll be very much the same as who you are now. But you may want to experience a change, and so with your free will, in the Oversoul, you are able to experience those things. Now you hear people talk about all these different things. Oh, you can't get to the Oversoul. You bounce back to Earth and uh, creatures of light are just a false god. These are to keep you away from positive thinkings. Remember, God is a positive thinker. How else could he create so many things in a positive realm? However, he knows that you are negative thinkers as well. And so all the things that you can think of, he creates. Why? He wants to see what you're thinking. He wants to discover that entity that is different than what he created, that you picked up on the way. So therefore, I could go on and on about how to look at the soul, but I think that that would take up way too much time. And But I gave you a little glimpse of how you can perceive yourselves in the eye of the soul, because the soul and yourself are one, and the higher self is the guide to the soul and the person, but the soul is the one that keeps all the information from the past lives and puts it into the chakras when they put it into another body. Yes. I'm going to drink some water for the human experience. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of human experiences, let's get some yeah, hydration. Thank you. That is wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much, Ish. You have such a way of elaborating on these amazing topics. We really appreciate it. Um, we did have a question from Alex in regards to these fourth dimensional energies and more coming in. Alex would like to know how we are able to keep our own thought processes essentially unaltered by these new energies coming in. And so, of course, Just there's lots intended. Of right. You have free will. You can intend that your thought process not be altered. But you know what? If there is something in the fourth dimensional energy that your mind likes, that you love, you're going to grasp onto it. So therefore, be aware 
that your mind has a mind of its own. <laughs> so, um, because it has, you you see that that only a small portion of the mind is open to actual conscious thought, and most of the mind is uh, lays dormant to subconscious activity and thought, and and. Therefore, when the fourth dimensional energy comes and rushes over some of those areas that are not yet enlightened, you might find that your brain will attach itself to, in some area or another, to some of this fourth dimensional area, and you will love it. And it will, because your mind wanted to bring that to your attention or bring you that to light at the moment and enlighten you with some of this information. But at this time, you can will yourself not to be changed in any way, shape, or form. But you can say to the subconscious, if there's something really good out there that I really would love, you can grab onto that. But as for my own personal will at this time, I do not want to add on any negativities or any things that are going to be confusing, or anything that's going to change my direction in this lifetime, or things of that nature, unless it's beautiful and positive. So, uh, I see, however, that inadvertently, even with, even with that great intention, the brain and the subconscious may grab onto something really wonderful and beautiful for you unless you absolutely reject it in the conscious mind and you can do that it can grab onto something beautiful and within that period of the brain that is not conscious and and bring it to your consciousness and you can say no so be aware of that as well Okay, wonderful. Yeah, it's it's all about us creating the reality we want to be in. It sounds like it is so. very true that you create a reality that you want to be in, because who chooses your friends? Right. Exactly. You do. <laughs> that is a reality, is it not? That you choose. You choose your friends, and they choose you. You choose where you go. It does not choose you. So in very, very many, many real ways, you choose your realities. And you choose how to live. You do not choose to go to college if you do not want to go. You do not choose to spend money where you do not like to spend money. Your reality is chosen by you. And you may say, well, I was born into poverty. There have been many that were born into poverty that are no longer in poverty. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, but hey, if you want the experience of whatever it is, then go for it. And you can <laughs> stay in poverty if you are not knowing how to get out of it. But you, the thing is about that, humans know how to get out of poverty, but they use it as an excuse not to do anything not to be anyone, not to have the responsibility. They don't want it. Some people just don't want it. Those that want it, bring it on themselves and move forward. Those that don't want it, stay where they are. No, don't let anyone tell you they cannot change their reality because that is not the truth. Thank you for touching on that. I know that's a very huge issue for a lot of people right now, especially in the light worker communities, um, and not to mention people all over the they world. They choose to stay with their own thought processes. They cannot accept that they are wrong. And so in order for them to move forward, they must grab on to a new thought process, a new part of the light, a new clue on how to move forward. And if they do not like the looks of it, and if they do not like uh, a person that is doing it, they, they use that as an excuse not to move forward. And therefore, they hinder themselves, where they do not have to be like the person that has that. Everyone is different. 
everyone uses information in different ways, but do not let them tell you that they cannot move forward because that is not the truth. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so the next question we have is from Jonah. She would like to ask, she says, I have been creating an energy ball with my hands during meditation. Why is that and what should I do with them? Thank you so much. The energy ball is an interesting phenomenon. You can create energy balls to throw out for healing, to throw out for energy to other people, or bring into yourself. These energy balls exist for a reason. They can bring you healing into your personal life. They can bring healing to others. They can bring energy to others, inspiration. They, they put an intention on this energy ball that you're creating. You can feel it. It can be as big as a basketball, if you wish, or even larger. But you can use that as healing power. You can use that as energy for creation. You can use that for healing. You can use that for edification of a body, edification of an idea, even. And so this is another way to move forward also. Just bring it into your meditation, even. And it can help you to move beyond this world into another world because that's the kind of energy you're creating. You're creating an energy that can be uh, labeled as interdimensional and also personal. You can, you can put intentions on it and change it and make it into healing energy. You can make it into physical energy, you can make it into interdimensional energy. Oh my goodness, if people would start using that energy ball during their meditations, they would find that they would be off. Ah, there's somebody that uses energy balls in this room. I can sense it. Don't you? <laughs> I knew exactly who it was. Um, they never told me that, actually. They never said that to me or never said that to anyone else. But um, I could sense that. And these energy balls are very powerful. You must believe in it. And, but as you are creating it, the very idea that you can create it tells you, tells you, tells you that there is a great use for it. What is that use? You only know what it is to be used for because it will come to you. After you have come and created this energy ball, you're thinking, wow, this could be very healing. Wow, this could be very influential in some way. How am I supposed to use this? You will have an idea already. And the person that asked that question already knows because I think they think it's a healing aspect, and that is correct. It is a healing aspect. That is amazing. Um, I'm going to turn my camera on here for a second. Um, I was yes. taught to um, make energy balls easily with rubbing your hands together really fast and then yes. pulling them apart and then just slowly moving them together until you can feel the resistance. Um, Correct. So that it, it's amazing me... to realize it's about our intention for it. You realize what this part is. This is actually the connection of the circuits. This is actually connection of the circuits that you are connecting and making sure your energy field is intact and working before you pull it apart and create another energy field. So that is why you rub your hands together, is to connect the energy field of your personage, and then you may create a, another energy field. So, so that cool. is necessary. You see, that is a necessary part of it. You can do this as well, connecting all the circuits and feel the energy go from one part of the fingers to another part of the fingers, 
or you could rub the hands together and feel the energy moving throughout the hands very quickly. And then when you pull it apart, ah, there it is. And as you pull it, come together, it solidifies. And you can actually bring it back out because your energy, the palms of your hands are actually chakras, energy chakras, like the chakras on your, the major chakras on your body. So the palms of your hands are actually chakras that are creating this energy along with the fingertips that have small chakras and the wrist has an, another energy chakra. So there's a lot of energy right here. Lots of energy that you can create right there with the hand and um, bring into existence some very powerful energy and then you can intention it and change it. It's wonderful. Humans, I did not even know humans were aware of all these kinds of energies. Perhaps you're not, but now you are. So, um, but you are able to create these energy balls. Use them in a beautiful and wonderful way. Now, there are uh, aliens that are so powerful, they can turn it into a fireball and, and, and send it off as a weapon. But I do not think that humans can do that quite at this point. But um, it is what it is. Yes, exactly. And uh, brings a whole new light on shows like Dragon Ball Z, right? <laughs> Some people yeah. will want to read about that. Um, yeah, so it, that, that's absolutely incredible. Thank you for going into more uh, detail about that. And people, yeah, intend for healing. Go for it. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. Intend um, for energizing, yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. We are able to change the world for the better, all of us together. So, yes, next we have a absolutely. question. Thank you. Next we have a question from Megan. If you're able to speak up here, Megan. I gotcha. Hi, Ish. Hello. How are you, Megan? How are you? It's so lovely to speak with you. It's lovely to speak with you as well. I have another meditation question. <laughs> um, it seems that's coming up a lot today. Uh, yeah. I've, I meditate laying down. Um, I'm always laying on a bed. And um, the last maybe half a dozen times that I've meditated, I can feel a spirit or entity laying down on top of me and just sitting inside of my body. And I think I know who this is, but I was wondering if you could give me more information on it. It is someone that, yes, you already know who it is. They will, <laughs> not tell me, they will not tell me who it is because that is personal to you. If you want everyone to know, they would. it doesn't matter. But, yes, they are coming to your meditations for a specific reason. Do you understand? This is a personal time between you and this, per, this individual. I'll call them an individual. They are communicating with you and giving you the energy that you need to face a certain situation that is coming. Now, I do not know what that situation is, but they see it coming in your life, and they want to be able to be, you to be prepared for it, and they want you to call on them for strength and solace. Thank you so much. You know what this situation is already? I don't ex entirely know. Very well. But they do. Okay. So they are there to give you comfort, support, and say to you, no, don't stress over this as much as you might want to. Oh, I think I know now. <laughs> okay. This makes sense. Um, Excellent. So they are with you to be your comfort, your solace, your love, your, your kindness, and they know what is happening, and they said, Let us, let's get through this together. I'm here for you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I have just one more question. Um, I'm experiencing what I can only refer to as instant synchronicities. Um, where I'll go about my life, I will see something, and then within a few minutes it pops up again in a different area. And this is happening over yes. and over and over again. Um, you are not and <laughs> Yes, I just, I know. <laughs> and um, I'm just wondering, does this have to do with 
me and somebody and another person that I care about very deeply, or is this just a general sort of thing? Uh, it has to do with several things. It's the fourth dimensional energy that is affecting you right now. Also, it is sparking your psychic energy. It is sparking many people's psychic energy to be synchronistic at that time with the things that they need to bring forward in their forethoughts. Does that make sense to you? And so therefore, your thought processes are being affected psychically with this energy. Mm -hmm. And this will give you an idea. It could be about a person. It could be about an event. It could be about anything. But it is something that is letting you know you need to pay attention to this. You need to pay attention to these snippets of information because they do are I do important. With them? Yes. What's what, that? What do I do with them? And I pay attention you to them. You, you pay attention to them because they're important to something that's going to happen or is happening. Okay, okay, yes, now I understand. Yes. Thank you so much for They're, very, they're not random. They're, they're not, not random. random. No. Beautiful. No, they are not random. And I think other people out there are experiencing that. And Absolutely. David, David is experiencing that. There are other people experiencing those particular psychic thought splashes. I'll call them a splash. because, But what it is, it's a splash of water to wake you up to what is happening in that perception. But it's the fact so, that it's, it's happening psychic, so frequently, it's over yes, and it, over and over within a, a few hours. Yes, it's a psychic perception, and you're supposed to pay attention to it. Okay. And there's a reason for it, and I don't know what they are, everyone's <laughs> or individual to each of you, but they are important, and they will open up something else. Perhaps they are an opening to something else as well. That yes. was just came to me. They are an opening to a new segment. They are an opening, a gateway, in, if you will. And some of it is just to let you know that there is something very close, something very important that you need to pay attention to that you may not be paying attention to at this time. And you're going, well, what is that? So look at these particular splashes and see what they pertain to. And if they can pertain to something differently than what you may originally think. Does that make oh, sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much, Ish. It was lovely to speak with you. Wonderful. I am so happy to speak with you. I love you. I love you as well. Oh, that was great. Um, very good confirmation for me as well, and I know a lot of others. Um, we have a question from Sheer next. Sheer. So, fire bowls, yes. huh? A fire hose. Fire bowls. Oh, no. oh. ah. <laughs> Any race oh, that I know? I was, I, my mind went somewhere else. I'm sorry. I, um, because of other things that are on your mind. So anyway, <laughs> but um, okay. What is your question? Any race that I know that they can create fireballs from their palms of their hands? Uh, who can? Any? Oh yes, I know of actually two different species that can do that. It's very rare that they do it because it's against the law. In, in their uh, species because it can it's it's like shooting someone you can't they don't allow people to create fireballs because they're usually used against the others they're only allowed to use them in um, entertainment circumstances and that thing but if they're used to harm anyone that's against the law And you can tell me one of their race names? The Pekisi. Okay. Also, uh, you mentioned that the area that you are from, that 
Ishka, Ishka, Ishka. Yes, Ishka. Ishka. It's spelled differently than my name. I'm spelled I S H. Is well, I mean, hmm. I see. And which density is it? You said it between densities. So between which densities are there? The Ishka. The uh, it goes between several densities: third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Well, as the the planet got caught in a dimensional shift, and that's why we use it, is because it is, it does go to so many dimensions, and it is only apparent in certain parts of the sky at certain times for certain areas. So it will show up in, it will be able to be seen by Earth perhaps uh, 15 to 20 days out of the year. Oh, oh, and do you know if I went there or if I can go there? You have gone there, yes. There are about seven or eight of you that have gone there. Hmm. Okay, but nice. it is, it is us who brings you there, uh, Ish, and uh, other ascended masters who, if they want to talk to you, they'll bring you there, or if they want to, uh discuss things or enlighten whatever it is that we want to do but you have no memory of it someday you will but not at this time i was okay. saying something before but i don't remember what it was and also ask for yes i also ask for permission for us to be um interact so I would like to interact with him. With interact with who? With you. Ah oh, yes, we are very interactive. Yes. Okay. You have a lot of different connections. I'm surprised that you can stay awake during the day. I have a lot of dreams, but I never. Like I remember, maybe one percent of my astral and everything else is just dreams. I but think I that will change with the fourth dimensional. Yes, I think the fourth dimensional energy should change that. Uh, but you know, Remulak, your father, uh, has he wants you to remember things from his area, but he doesn't care about you remembering anything from any other area. But I think he pretty much protects you from other things. So we'll see. I'll talk to him. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, much love. You're welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Sarah. Sarah. Yes. Uh, hello, Ish. Um, yes. Well, I had the same question as uh, Sheer. Have I been on your your star? planet. Ishka? Ishka, Have you yeah. been on Ishka? Yes, you have been to Ishka. The Hathors brought you here. There's a, well, there's an ascended master from the Hathor population, and that person brought you to Ishka to speak to you, yes. Yes, that's wonderful. And I wanted to ask about, in a lot of my meditations, I'm within stars, like within suns. Side. There are populations within stars, yes. Yes, but I become the sun itself, or I become the yes. star, and lots of time it's Sirius that it keeps leading me to, the Syrian star. Yes, because because um, in a past life you did spend a f uh, 50 or 60 million years as a star. Oh, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Just as Mother Earth is here spending her time as Earth, there are some quick stars. You wanted to see what it was like to be a star, and 50 or 60 million years is a very quick one. Usually they last billions of years, but um, sometimes they flicker out or get bumped away by other stars or whatever. So therefore, you just wanted to experience it. 
because you come from a very early part of existence, the early realms of what we call first creation uh, that we can possibly imagine. But there was creations before creations before creations. So it's never ending and it never started. It's always been. Oh, that's, that's great. You know. Thank you for letting me know. Very um, well. Also, I'm being, it seems like the stars are being transformed into the crystalline beings that have been channeling lately. There are crystalline um, beings, um, yes. Some spirits of Earth have been going and creating crystalline beings as alter egos to their personalities. Uh, please do explain. There are humans that believe in the crystalline beings and so as they are creating these crystalline beings you see earth has created the beings of earth have actually created the crystalline population by using their alter egos as part of the crystalline creation no that's not what i'm talking about this is the crystalline creation that was part of gaia um, oh, at the yes. higher densities. Yes. What about it? Yes, I seem to be transforming into one in my meditations. Yes, that's fine. Um, but like I was saying, yes, you can transform into the higher forms of the crystalline beings if that is what you want and if that helps you with your meditation. It does help because the crystalline beings have a different resonation. You see, yeah, very high. It's a very higher resonation. Yes. So therefore, yes, you do that because it helps with your toning for one thing, because you can reach a higher resonation of toning as a crystalline being as well. So you're saying the crystalline beings were created only on Earth? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that entirely. The Earth at this time, within the last 20, 25 years, has started to create an alter ego set of crystalline beings because they really want, they really are attracted to that for some reason. But you are a part of a crystalline essence that is much older. Yeah. This is what used to be on the planet, and there are still some around on the planet. Yes. It's just people don't know about it. Well, you see, the, the, the Earth being what it is can help form crystalline beings. So that's why humans are able to do it. It's a long story. Someday we'll talk. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Um, we do have a question from Carolina next, and also um, if any other beings would like to come in. I yes, I'm sort of hogging the stage, as it were. Oh well, I don't mind, but we like hearing from others too. Oh, oh there's some questions in the room as well after this. Oh, wonderful. Carolyn. Yes, hi. Ish. Um, actually, the, there was Rihanna's question that because I've asked before, so she can go instead of me. I did not hear. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, I misunderstood. Oh. Okay, then. Um, actually, next up we're gonna have Wendy, and then we'll go to Renu. And there's a question in the room also. Hello, Ish. Hello, Wendy. Hi, how are you today? I'm so happy that you're here today. You have um, answered so many questions for me that I haven't even asked yet. And as, <laughs> as usually is the case, so thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Um, everything from the energy ball to information I've received, I've received myself about um, between the dimensions. Um, so I'm very excited about this. My main very question good. my main question has to do with healing. 
Yes. And if a person, ha okay, so I, I like the way you segued into this about we create our own reality. So if a person has come here, now, if a person has come here and agreed to, say, go through something, a physical ailment of some form or disability, but yet they're asking for healing, as a healer, where do we distinguish between the person, how do we honor the choices that they made to come here to serve themselves and me as the, as the co-creator? Um, how do we approach a healing situation if a person, or, or is it that they truly are looking for us to help them through their belief systems that they can understand their own self-healing. I'm, I'm a little, I'm looking for a little clarification as a healer. This, as a healer, you do your job as a healer. As a person with a disease, even if it's contractual, the lesson to be learned is how you deal with having this affliction, how you deal with getting rid of this affliction. Now, if you deal with it properly, you may not have to have this affliction always. You may find that because you've dealt with the thought process, with the actual disease, and the way to take care of it in a very positive and beautiful way, that you may be healed. And that is another outcome to a contract. Is that not a lesson to be learned? How to be healed? So therefore, you as a healer must just do your job. Heal as best as you can. The attitude, the thought processes of how that person is dealing with their affliction is part of their lesson. So therefore, you do not worry about what you have to do because you are doing the right thing by doing what they ask. If they ask, that is part of their lesson. They are headed in a proper direction, even though they may not sometimes believe fully that healing can happen, at least they're pursuing the proper direction. Now let's see how they can make their belief systems work in third dimension. This is part of every human's uh, lesson in life is how do you get your belief systems in line with a good life? How do you create a life around you that is filled with all your belief systems and is strong enough to overcome those things that you don't or say you don't believe in? Do you understand that? Yes, completely. Thank you. You have completely validated everything that I was looking for. Um, I appreciate Excellent. that very much. Um, is there anything that you might offer myself or, or any of us um, as healers to assist uh, those people who wish to transform their belief systems? Is there anything that you can share with yeah. us? Um, I, I love the energy ball. I was actually, I do them all the time. and. I'm so happy, so I sent energy balls right away. <laughs> um, there, yeah, so. there is something that you can do. Whenever you're a healer and you are trying to help someone understand what healing is and what healing does, you can explain away all everything as much as you want about what healing is supposed to do. But until you involve the patient, the client, in their own healing process, they cannot understand it. They will not be ignited. Ah, that's a word that Will would use. They will not be ignited to understanding healing until they are part of it. So when you are healing someone, tell them 
they are part of it as well. Their belief system counts toward their goal of being healed. The more they believe in the energy, the more they believe in God, the more they believe that they are helpful in this process as a believer, it's not only your energy, but their energy as well. So combine your efforts. Add God. Combine them. Reach out. Tell them, you are part of this healing process. Help me heal you. Because our energies will combine with God and the universe and all the other things that are there. And we will heal you together. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything you said is just completely resonating with everything that I've been given visually. So um, thank you so much. I truly love uh, your presence and your energy here and your guidance and your information. Thank you. Um, and just remember, if they cannot be part of their healing, there will be no healing. Correct. If I they understand. cannot be part of their healing, there will be no healing because their belief system must engage it. And we as healers need to embrace and accept that as well, do we not? Yes, because you must believe in yourself and your efforts as, as, as powerful as an exploding sun if necessary. Yet we can't take personally necessarily the fact that they, if they've chosen to, to continue that particular journey, I guess we can't take it necessarily as a personal reflection of our own healing abilities then. No, you cannot. You have to continue to believe in your abilities and give them to the fullest and most loving energy that you can. Because as you believe, believe it or not, <laughs> it encourages other beliefs in other people. And as an example of the energy of healing power, if they can see you and others working together to heal another client, Will that not increase their belief system? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Many, many blessings. Thank you for being here. Many Much blessings. Love. I, I want to say this too. There are those yes. out there that believe that no matter what, they can't be healed. They just don't believe it. They don't think they are worthy. Have you heard people say that? I'm just not worthy of the healing. I am not, no one wants to heal me. And that is why there is no healing there. They don't believe they are worthy. But guess what? You may be one of those people that say, I'm not worthy. I don't, no one can heal me because I can't be healed. Guess what? That's your belief system. And everyone is worthy. That is why you're put into the physical body to prove your worthiness. You don't have to prove it. You can experience your worthiness. Experience it. You don't prove it. You experience your worthiness by being what you are supposed to be and moving through life with positive experience. Now, there will always be negative, but how do you move through that? You can th move through negativity in a positive way, and they go, oh, more goody-two-shoes stuff. Well, do you want to live goody-two-shoes or miserable? If, do you want to be made fun of as, of, as a goody-two-shoes or be made fun of as an old gruff grouch? Now, I know you're somewhere in between. However, with the amount of positivity that is generated every day in all parts of the universe, you could be happy every moment. 
if you knew how to control and manipulate that positive energy. But on Earth, it's very difficult because you live among negative energy. It is all around. It's like you have to shovel through it some days. But if you realize and believe, if your belief system was strong enough to say, I don't have to have negative days, you could actually go through terrible, horrible experiences and get through it without much grief whatsoever. Now, there are times when you want to perhaps experience sorrow and loss and things of this nature, but be happy at the end of it because they're in a better place. They're in a loving, wonderful place. Sure, you're feeling bad for yourself because you won't see them anymore. You're going to miss their company. But guess what? They're in a fabulous place. And you don't have to worry about that. You're worried about yourself. And that's a lot of reason why people feel negativity because they are selfish about it. It's all about me, so I have to be sad. Do you understand that? If you were not selfish, it's about not being unhappy. How unselfish is that? It is unselfish because when you are un when you are happy, everyone experiences that, and you are being very unselfish. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Thank you, Ish. Um, uh, could we have the question from the room next? Yes, it, she is here right here. Hi, it's Barbara. Uh, Hi, it's Barbara. Barbara, hello. Uh, hello. I have a question for you. I see a lot of um, figures in my around me during the day, almost all the time. Can you tell me who is there? Are they uh, alien spirits? Because I know spirit coast is there a lot. Yes. But what about who are the other entities or beings that I'm seeing? I see that there are many entities around you, and let me tell you something. It's a personal thing for you because. You think about the spirit a lot and going into spirit. And there are many there that are welcoming you to that area. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they know that you want to come there because you're unhappy about some things about the physical. physical. And the physical is not your cup of tea at this time. But there are many relatives and loved ones around you that say, yes, we'll we understand how you feel. We felt the same way at one time. Our lives were not that great at periods too. But we also want to give our support to you in this lifetime because you are a special person. You are able to talk to spiritus. You don't think that there's aliens around you for no reason at all. They don't just appear there for no reason at all. There is a reason for this. And there are reasons for spirits to visit you. They want you to know that you are welcome if that's what you want. But that there is other reasons for your life. Who are the other ones and other beings? They're family. They're starseed family. Okay. And you have several different starseed families. This life has been very challenging for you. <laughs> it's but apartment. you... But... It's not a karma thing unless you believe so. It is a karma thing if you make it a karma thing. But right now, what it is, is a shift in understanding of all things that you are. It's a shift in understanding on how to use your healing abilities. It's a shift in understanding on how to be a greater person, even with difficulties in the physical. Can I have another question? Because I will be having surgery again. Yes, I know. Is this a good time with all this energy coming in? Because it kind of. It absolutely is. is. There is no bad time. If you intention the surgery to be successful, if you believe 
and understand and trust that this is the right time, it definitely is. Because this is a time for maybe a greater independence than you usually experience. After this next operation, I understand what that is, and you're not really for it. But they're pushing for it. Yeah, and we're going to move it out to next year. Yes, right you're now. pushing for uh, an extension because there is healing thoughts in your mind. And I like that about you because there's belief systems at work here. There's some change in your thought processes about this. And these are recent changes. So therefore, yes, it's wonderful. I would like to speak to you about that privately, but um, yes, I understand where you are, and yes, I agree with you 100%, build that belief system that healing is possible. I have another question. Yes. I have a friend that I, I love dearly, but very negative. I know who that is, yes. If I separate myself from them, is that going to cause karma or any kind of repercussion on my, on my part? If you believe it will, it will. Let me tell you about this person. They see your positivity and they are jealous of it. They're envious of it in some ways because they know what you go through, but yet you keep a greater and more positive attitude about your life than they do and their life is not nearly as bad as yours in the physical realm. They live with a very negative person. They live with a very negative idea of what life is, but they do have healing abilities. And they do use them as much as possible, but they're not that strong. Why? Because they've limited themselves in so many ways. Now, if you were to stop seeing them, it would be better for you in many ways. But if you still see them, it's better for them because you are an example of positivity to them. If you can stand being around them in their negativity, you actually are an example of positivity to them. And you know what? I would ask this person, why don't you use your healing on me? Well, we're working. I don't, let's not talk. Can you do a healing session for me? Can you use your positive energy when you're with me? Can you use your positive energy to help me? Maybe it's, let's fair close that I want to see him more often. <laughs> he already knows, and I've already told him. Yes. Okay. Very well. Thank you so much. Um, so I know we're getting close to the time here, but um, we did have a question I think maybe very beneficial for some people from Louise was asking if you could touch a little bit on beggars and those who are um, either homeless or you know that that whole situation if you can shed some light for us going through what we are right now usually someone of this nature has come from a broken home an imbalance of some sort or they themselves are imbalanced and have too much of a, a certain kind of energy or has misused drugs in some way that it has changed who they are in the third dimension. <coughs> this has led them to believe that they are not worthy of normal things. They, have, they feel much guilt. They have been guilted and they have caused themselves to feel guilt and they cannot forgive themselves and they put themselves in a place of negativity. Now some of them are innocents that have been born without means or in very high fourth dimensional energy and cannot relate to third dimensional energy and there is no one around them that can relate to them and therefore they become 
homeless or become part of the system, as you would call it. Do you realize that these are people are the ones that probably have the greatest power on earth? These are the ones that have been pushed down because someone out there wants them not to be successful. Someone out there wants them to be kept silent or kept their abilities under wraps. I can tell you, I have watched Jim, this person, work with the retarded adults and work with homeless people and discover that they have greater abilities than you might think. And they have greater understanding than you might think. And they are worthy of attention. But they cannot see that because they were always told that they were worthless. They were always, some of them are alcoholics and drug addicts, of course. And the drugs and the alcohol tell them, I'm worthless. Look where I am. Look what I've done. But guess what? We should be paying attention to these people. We can learn a lesson from them. Because they have the means to bring themselves up out of this. And many of them have. Many of them have. But they have to believe that they can do it. They have to be given some support. That's where we come in. All of us. We say, you can do it. You are cared about. But some don't believe it still. Because they've been pushed down so far, their belief systems have been damaged to such a point where beliefs are very hard for them. So, what is necessary? And that is more positive examples. They don't have positive examples. They have negative examples. They have those that push them down. They have those that tell them that they're nobody. They go to shelters where they're treated like nothing. They see politicians say, Oh, we want to help you, but we don't have the money. So you're really not worth it. But yet we'll build a housing development over here. So this is what they see. We are not worth it. But they are worth it. They are individuals just like him or you. I am not an individual. I am a, a spirit. But I was an individual. And I can tell you, I have seen miracles with these people. Miracles. Yes. But it is all in their perception of themselves. That was an amazing way of phrasing that. Thank you so much, Ish. Um, there has been a lot of that on purpose, as we know, um, things would be very different if people knew their true internal divine power. And I think that's all of our jobs to enlighten others of their own well, internal power. Even the very fact that most people, if they see a homeless person, will steer away from them. And this sends a very clear message. You are not worthy. I don't want to be seen near you. And I don't want to smell you or even be close to you. I wanted to comment and ask you to comment on that. If um, things become worse, if there will be economic crisis, tons of homeless will be around. And uh, one thing, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay for, to ask for help even now. It's okay to yes. go. It, even if you be, become homeless, just it's all right. Don't be ashamed. Comment Don't be ashamed, no. Like I said, there is a way out of everything. Believe, believe, believe in the most positive things. And even if you can't see a light at the end of the tunnel, 
you know what? It's shining up from below you. It's shining down from above you. You're looking in the wrong direction to find the light. It's there somewhere. Turn around. With that, I must go. Okay, we understand. Thank you, Ish, for coming through today. It has been so enlightening and wonderful to have your wisdom and guidance, and I know that it resonated very highly with many of us. Um, so we appreciate it. We love you so much. Bless you. Namaste, and I'm off. Namaste.